Hello, this is Skylar, and I know it's quite late, but here's Java Programming Lesson 8. In previous lessons, we discussed using variables to store small quantities of data, such as strings to store names or titles, integers to store all sorts of whole numbers, and doubles to store fractional numbers. However, today we're going to take a much more in-depth look at data storage using arrays. So here's a scenario. You're working at a company and your boss would like you to write a program to store the name, age, and an ID number for every employee. Now we know how to do that. We can make a string called name, an integer called age, and an integer called ID. Oof, all right, there we go, done. But here's the problem. Let's say there are 10,000 employees at this company. So you're gonna make a string called name one, name two, name three, name four. That sounds like it's going to get very boring very quickly. Luckily, arrays come to the rescue. So far in our lessons, we know that if we make an integer called age and set it equal to 10, we're reserving a block of memory, calling it age, and then storing the number 10 in it. How an array works differently is we can ask the computer to reserve a large chunk of memory to store several integers side by side. You can see the syntax here is very similar to creating a single variable. The difference is, after we put the variable type, we're going to put two block brackets, an opening and a closing, to tell the compiler that we want to create an array of numbers, not just a single one. And every variable, you have to set it equal to something, right? So our new int array, called age, we set it equal to new, and then the variable type. So int, with two more block brackets, but this time, inside the block brackets, we put the size of the array. So if we want 100,000 integers, like I do here, I put the number 100,000. If I wanted only five integers, then I could put the number five in there. So that's pretty nifty. Now we have 100,000 integers at our disposal. Now what? So to access an element inside of an array, what you're gonna do is you're gonna write down the name of the array and then use the block brackets again. But inside the block brackets this time, you're gonna put the index ID for which integer you want to access. So now programmers are very efficient people, of course. So we start counting from zero. So if you want the first element inside the array, you want age zero. If you want the next one, it's gonna be age one or age two and so on and so forth. So in that fashion, every element inside of the array has its own number and you access it through that number. Once you've done that, you can treat the array element just like any other integer variable. So you can store numbers into it using an equal sign. You can also use it in arithmetic operations like we've done before. You can scan numbers into it using the scanner object, and you can even print out the numbers using the system.out.print line, just like any other integer. So before we fly off and use arrays in a Java example, I want to leave you with one word of warning. This is an extremely common mistake with arrays. Take a look at this code. I'm making an integer array called numbers, and I set the size equal to three. So I have three integers inside of an array. Now I try to set element number three inside the numbers array equal to 42. This is gonna cause an exception. And the reason is the array is only size three, and we start counting from zero. So the numbers array only has elements zero, one, and two. Be really careful with this. Also, if you try to set a negative index number, inside of an array, it'll give you a similar exception. So with that on your mind, let's see an example. Here we are again. So obviously, let's make an array. I'm going to make a new array called numbers. I'm going to make it size 3. That's pretty manageable for now. So first things first, let's just do a print statement. And let's print out the values inside of our numbers array. So here I'm going to print out the first element. Then here I can print out the next element and then the next. So I'll print out all three elements inside the numbers array. So let's just run this for right now. So first things first, prints out all three zeros. Fantastic. So this is actually really nice. I didn't mention this before, but Java actually sticks the zeros into all the integers for you when you first make an array. Not all languages do that for you. So appreciate Java. Let's change those zeros though. So I'm gonna say numbers zero equals one. So I'm setting the first element equal to one. And they're going to set numbers 1, 2. So the second element equals 2. And the third element equals 3. So then when we print this, see it prints out 1, 2, and 3, just like we would expect it to. Now that's pretty easy, but let's, let's take it up a notch. What if I had 100 numbers? 
Again, this isn't something that I want to copy and paste over and over again. In fact, if you look back in our last tutorial with looping, this looks like the sort of scenario that we should use a for loop in. So I'm going to do a for loop from 0 to 99. So you really better get used to for loops because they are so useful. So we're going to set numbers i equal to i. So you can step through this for loop. The first time it goes through, i is going to equal 0. So it's going to set numbers element 0 equal to 0. Then the second time it loops through, i is going to equal 1, right? It's going to increase i, but 1. And then numbers 1 is going to be set equal to 1. Numbers 2 is going to be set equal to 2, so on and so forth, all the way up to 99. So I'm going to make one other for loop to print out the values. So here I'm going to do system, oops, system dot out dot print line, uh, numbers i. And there we go. There's a Here's another program, a much larger array. And when we run this one, you see it prints out all the values from 0 to 99. So it'd probably be better to make this equal to i plus 1. So then when we run this, we can see we have an array of 100 numbers. And each number is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So this is really useful. In fact, let's do something with it. So that program that I told you in the beginning of the tutorial, the one where we're going to store employees' names, age, and ID numbers. Let's take a crack at it. First thing, though, I'm going to make an integer called employees set equal to 3. Now, this is going to be useful because we don't know how many employees we're going to have. And in fact, it might change. So I'm going to set this integer here. And then I'm going to make an array of strings called name. And then before, I would just say three because I have three employees. So I would make an array of three strings. But in Java, you can just say employees. And then it will take this integer employees and make the array that size. So then if we get a fourth employee or a hundred thousandth, we can, we can change these arrays dynamically. So then let's make age, new int with size employees. And then we'll make our ID, which is a new int, employees. All right, so we've made our arrays. Now, how do we want to fill these up? Uh, it'd be kind of menial to do it in the code. And in fact, it would be really nice if we could do it dynamically. So I'm going to make a scanner so we can read in from the input. And don't forget to include your scanner. All right, there we go. So we have a scanner. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop for each employee and read in their age, name, and ID. So start from 0. Now before we would do to 3, but I'm going to do to employees this time. See, for loops are just so, so useful. I'm going to start by prompting the user. Say, uh, please type the name, age, and ID for employee, and then I. So employee 0, employee 1, so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to make something called string new name. So equal to in.next. So we're going to read in the next string from the, uh, the scanner. Then we're going to make an int called new age. Dot next int. And then I'm going to read in the new ID. Very nice. OK, and then what I, need, what I need to do is set the original arrays equal to these new values. So name i is going to equal new name. Then uh, age i. It's going to equal new age, and id i is going to equal new id. So this will loop however many employees we have and store the proper data in the right arrays. And then let's just do one last for loop, the last one, I promise, for now. And this one's just going to print out the employee. So I'm going to say a system dot out dot print line. I'm going to say employee i, and then it's going to print out their name then with a space in between their age and then their ID. And that's a pretty nice program there. So let's run it and see how it goes. So type in the name, age, and ID for employee zero. So I'm employee zero, of course. My age, 20. ID is going to be 42, of course. So then here's employee one, Kristen, 21. And she'll be employee one. Certainly. Then employee two. I don't know. This guy. Very old. Negative ID number. Okay, and then we print out at the end all three employees and the numbers that we stored into our arrays. 
So this concludes our array tutorial. It's very powerful and you really need to practice with it to get the hang of it. Thanks for sticking around though and stay tuned for lesson number nine. I promise it will take less than a year.